Hello and welcome back in the workshop this week. As you can tell from my jacket, the season has changed a bit. We'll still go out, but um, we'll be in here today because I want to add something to the bike. Now, brace yourself as usual. When you look at the Royal Enfield and the stickers available for them and the sort of online content on the Royal Enfield website, uh, people's videos. They make quite a big deal out of the sort of 1901. 1901, Royal Enfield started in England. And you get 1901, you know, clothing, 1901, badges, stickers, graphics on the bike. So you thought, 1901, what if I could find something from 1901 <laughs> to put on the bike? You know, I could, because I was thinking of, you know, I could get the sticker, but you know, no. What if there was something from 1901, which is what, 123 years ago? And put that on the bike. Now I can sort of already see the sort of cogs whirring in your mind. What, what on earth are you going to find? Now it's not that bad. Funny enough, I was in my mum's garage recently because I had to clean it up a bit. And I found something that has been knocking around the garage since I was a little boy. And many people have something like this. And it's an old tin of coins. Some people don't have a big tin like this. Not that it's full. Some people might have a little tin. They might just have a drawer with something. But everyone somewhere has got a pile of coins laying around. I thought maybe I can find something from 1901 and maybe a couple of other important years, Royal Enfield, and we can put on the bike. Well, this old biscuit tin is. So have a look in here. Because there are a lot. So come and have a look. And we'll have a look at this old coin collection. And I wish you could smell this because it, it just smells like old. If you like that sort of thing. But come and have a look. And hopefully we're going to find something because there's just so much stuff here. I haven't seen this for years. Let's have a look. Here we go. Now I don't know where a lot of these came from. They've just been around since I was a child. Now my dad was in the Royal Navy and he went around the world a lot and a lot of them I know he bought back. There's a lot of um, foreign ones in here. I think this bag here but some of them are just, I think they've come from family or they were laying around. And most of them, as you can see, are old pre-decimal pennies. They're these ones. Let's see if you can focus on that. And that is a British pre-decimal penny which was a penny from the late 1800s, I think, to 1971, when it all went decimal, and it's all the modern pennies. And they made about a million every year. So there are millions of pennies around. Old pennies, look, there's just so many of them. What's that one? 1961. And the design didn't change. So 1961, that should have Queen Elizabeth II on the back. Yeah. If you find a really old one, what's that one? Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, close. Let's wait for that to focus. 1900, look. Just dated on the bottom. That's a year before Royal Enfield. 
That should be Queen Victoria looking a bit worn. Then I suppose you would be at that age. <laughs> Obviously, she died the next year. So actually, 1901 would be the last year of Queen Victoria. So I don't know if that's going to make it easy to find or not. We may not find one at all. But we just have to do our best. And we've got a load of other things. But I know the best ones are in here. Now, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Gold block. But if you're from the UK, you know exactly what this is. And it's a tobacco tin for a brand called Gold Block. <laughs> so we're not going to find a gold block. And I know it, if you're from, and if you're of a certain age, I know what you're thinking as well. Does it still smell? Just about, it just about still smells of tobacco. I think this has got some of the older coins in. What's that one? That's really shiny. Oh, that's another 1900. Penny. A few threepenny bits. Oh, that's shiny. I must have polished that one. Now, you shouldn't polish coins. It's bad. But um, you shouldn't make bikes rusty either. So, never mind. 1921. And that is King. Got my history's rubbish. George V. Nineteen twenty one. So somewhere in here. I'm hoping to find a 1901 penny or a 1901 anything. Also, Royal Enfield India started in 1955. So if I can find a 1955 penny as well, that would be great. Because then we'll have everything covered. Now I've got another one as well over here now this is a King George III cartwheel penny with a hole in it you have to get old coins with holes in because people would sort of hang them around their neck or as decorations King George III. That's called a cartwheel penny because it's huge. And look how thick it is. And that one is made in Birmingham, England, 1797. <laughs> I'd forgotten all about this one. It was just in the tin. 1797 cartwheel penny. My first instinct was, oh my God, this must be worth so much. You know, I sell this, I could buy a whole bike. And it's worth a little bit. It's worth about 30 pounds. So it's nearly as old as the United States of America, but it's worth 30 pounds. Cartwheel penny. And that is a really chunky bit of kit. So we'll keep that. Actually, if you've got sharp eyes, you may have picked that out as well. That's an ARP silver badge, Second World War. Service member used to sort of look out for a security in the UK. What I like about this cartwheel penny, apart from it's so big and chunky, is that it's kind of an end of an era because that was a penny just a few years later that was a penny just that tiny sliver of bronze it's not copper anymore it's a copper alloy it's bronze 
whereas that is pure copper, or as pure as I could get, 1797. But what's special about that is it was a penny's worth of copper. So the coin was a penny, but the intrinsic value of the copper in it was a penny. So it didn't matter if you believed in the monetary system of the time, 1797, because if someone gave you that, you had a, a piece of copper that was intrinsically worth something that you could bargain with. It didn't matter if the person you were meeting knew about money or sort of part of the system. A penny was a penny's worth of copper. But then they made, so society made an incredible leap of faith. And they said, look, we just haven't got enough copper to keep going around with these chunks of copper. And they're too big. We can't, for all the wealth that's being generated by the industrial revolution, by everything, there's just, we can't keep making pennies worth of copper. So the Bank of England said, okay, we won't do that. We'll make a penny out of a thin bit of bronze. And we'll just pretend, we'll just pretend that this is a penny's worth of copper. And as long as you pretend it's a penny's worth of copper and the person you give it to pretends it's a penny's worth of copper. And they have faith that the next person they meet believes then it is a penny's worth of copper. And society all over the world made this incredible leap that instead of actually having the intrinsic value, they just have a bit of faith that they had something that was kind of real, but not real. And to this day, that's how it works. We all pretend that what we carry is intrinsically worth something, but it's not. We just have to have faith that things don't collapse. And obviously they do collapse around the world, Venezuela and other countries, their currencies collapse and all the faith disappears. But it's an incredible bit of civilization to sort of let go of swapping things that really had value for something that didn't yet did. And even if you get a note, a banknote in the UK. That's a £10 note, which my wife hasn't found. And it says, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of £10. So it's just a promise. That's all it is. It's a promise that if you go to the Bank of England and give them that, they should give you 10 gold sovereigns. Now, if you try that, they're gonna tell you to get lost because you can't do that anymore. But it's still, still to this day, it's just a promise. I promise that this is worth something, even though it's a bit of plastic. So that cartwheel penny is the end of that era where money had to be worth something. So I really like that one. I'll save that for my tea. Anyway, enough nonsense. 1901. I think we're going to need a time lapse because I'm going to be here for a while. Check, nice, Victor, yes, check it out, 
just on the bottom there, look. It's Queen Victoria. She may not like where this is going. I was beginning to give up hope then. But no, a 123 year old British penny, made 1901. A little bit worn, as it would be. <laughs> but all intact. I'll give you a proper view now. Let's see if I can find the other one I wanted, 1955. Yes! Right, don't let me lose that. That's a shame. No 1955s. We'll come up with another plan for that. That's a shame. Never mind. There's lots of other important dates. So we'll make a plan. Right, let's give you a closer look at this coin. There it is. Made in 1901. One penny. That's Britannia on the front with a trident and shield. Britannia is sort of a British symbol. A bit like the eagle for America. You see it so often, people, you probably don't notice it. And on the other side, Queen Victoria. Now, I googled 1955 pennies, and apparently there were so many pennies, they didn't make any. <laughs> There's only a couple of years they never made any pennies, and 1955 was one of them. So what I found is one from 1948. Britannia's changed a bit, as you can see. She does change occasionally. Now, 1948 was the first year of the bullet. Now, the bullet was a name before that in Royal Enfield from the 30s. But 1948 was when they launched the first bullet, as we'd recognise it today, with a swing arm suspension. So, two very big years for Royal Enfield. I said you shouldn't polish coins, and you shouldn't. That's really bad. So I'm going to polish these right now. Let's have a look. Let's try a bit of the good old Maguire's NXT that we did the engine cases with. Hopefully this won't be as difficult as that. Let's be lazy and use a machine. I did say I never wanted to do any polishing again. Yeah, I know I can start the motor. I just want to make sure I've put enough on so that it flings all over the walls. <laughs> oh. Okay. a bit slower. Let's go a lot slower. Oh, I'm such a bad person polishing coins.
And I think under there, it's pretty shiny. This is the 1948 one. Let's polish that polish off. And we'll see what it looks like. Bloody hell. Reef. <laughs> Check it out. It's so shiny now, it looks like silver. Anyone into coins is probably doing the absolute nut right now. But you can buy your own penny. These are worth about a pound each. Old pennies. Man. 1948, first year of the classic bullet. Let's polish the 1901 one. The 1948 one. Let's see what's another polish. Oh, the edges shine. My fingers are definitely not shiny. Wow. Check it out. Made like a gun, 1901. That is unbelievably shiny. I never thought it'd go that shiny. Let's look at the other one. 1948, 1901, historic years, Royal Enfield. I think I need polishing now. King George, Queen Victoria. Right, so quick clean up. <laughs> Put these on the bike. Wow, shiny, shiny. Now, if you're already wondering, where's he gonna stick that on this poor motorbike? Well, obviously I've got the solo seat, which means I've got no pillion foot rests. So I've got these pillion delete discs from Hitchcock's, I'll put a link to them. They're just an aluminium turned part that bolts in and covers up this hole so what I'm going to do, stick our lovely pennies just on the side like that. 1901 this side, 1948 on the other side. So we really will have Royal Enfield 1901. Just when you thought that might be enough torture for this motorcycle. I've just, whilst tidying up, seen these leather straps, which are left over from the panniers I fitted a few weeks ago. As you remember, these straps were, uh, they came with the panniers, but they were a complete failure in fitting them, as they just were no use. So I ended up putting some brass fittings on the panniers. 
but for all their rubbishiness, they are quite a nice leather. If you like that sort of thing, which I do. And purportedly, they are brass buckles, so they shouldn't corrode. Whether they are or not, or they're just some plated nonsense, who's to know? Anyway, no, I haven't damaged my finger, I that's a pen. So, how can we use these? Come and have a look at the bike. So these here leather straps were supposed to go in these buckles in the pannier and hold them on, but as you can just see, that was never ever gonna work. So I used some brass plumbing fittings. I'll leave a link to that video. So, I have got an idea. <laughs> Get ready. Right, come around the front. So a few thoughts I had was, is there anything I could do with the crash bars? But they're not really long enough to um, do anything. I suppose I could wrap it round or, but it's all a bit, yeah, I know, don't worry, don't worry. That was not a good idea. I thought maybe the bars, Indicators. I don't know. Fork legs. It kind of looked like a pirate, wouldn't it? <laughs> Those straps on their arms. I don't know. But the fact it was flat obviously makes it quite limiting. What it can do. But I do like that they're full of holes. I do like a nice hole. But what I think I'm going to try is the headlamp surround. It's got this flat face. And if I work it so that the holes are on the top, except it's not long enough. Come a bit closer. Right, the width of this flat area is ideal. I mean, I don't know why you'd have a lather strap on your headlight, but, um, you know, why a lot of things. But I quite like that. It's, it's, I like the way it softens, softens all the metal a bit. But it doesn't reach. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stick a second strap on. There we go. Check it out. So I just need to add a hole down in here. And we can cut the rest of this off. Don't know how long that would last. Stick a hole in and put that on. Sorry if I'm in the way. 
go. Sweet. Now, who doesn't want a leather strap on their rusty Bertie? Have a look. Okay, a bit weird. Oh, I like the view from the back. Oh, look at that, isn't that sweet? That's right, I've got practically no limit to the nonsense I'll do. Now, just looking at the back, the light has got a similar arrangement. Yes. I should be able to do this in one. Hey, leather lights. Bet you never thought you'd see that today. There we go. What do you think about that? Royal Enfield, 1901. A real bit of 1901. Travelling around with it. And the 1948 as well. The first year of the modern bullet. Well, modern. <laughs> what we'd recognise as a bullet with the revolutionary swing arm suspension. And a bit of leather. I'm quite liking the bit of leather. Looks nice from this side. I like the way it sort of softens and spreads the brown around. I've been looking at this, as always, as I'll always say, if you're looking at this thinking, what the hell has happened to that bike? I'll leave a link to the playlist and it'll all make sense. So I know a lot of you might have sort of um, clicked on because you watched the worldwide exclusive video about the classic 650 and you may not have seen the bike before. So have a look at the playlist and it'll explain why it looks like this and why it's got all this going on. So it was interesting to see that classic 650 Opinion is very divided about it, but that's fine. I'm sure we'll all see it soon. I know a lot of people are annoyed that it's not a single, like a, a classic should be, but we should look at it and we shall look then. Hoping to see it next month at the Motor Show in uh, Birmingham in the UK. So I'll have a look, I'll take my camera along and if there's more I can show you, which I'm sure there will be, I'll give you a full rundown and an in-depth look at what's going on with it. Because I am excited to see it. You know, something new is always great. And look, compared to the intro, the sun's come out. Because that's UK weather for you. It's a lovely day. But hey, the rain is nice as well. Don't worry about Rusty Bertie in the rain. It's Rusty Bertie. That's why he's got stainless spokes, powder-coated rims, powder-coated parts just for this type of environment. So don't worry about Rusty Bertie. He'll be absolutely fine going out in the rain. And you know, it's quite refreshing. It's such a great bike. It's nice to go out when the sun's out or even when it's raining. Cause it's got that sort of that reliability, isn't it? It's got that thing that makes it feel like it's got your back and it'll look after you. So rain or shine, I am really loving this bike. And my riding <laughs> is going slower and slower and slower. Usually when I get a bike, I've always historically, it just goes fast as possible because that's what you always do. But I've started off, I started off going, oh, you know, 55 is comfortable for this. And then it was like, oh, 50 actually is, you know, don't need to go any faster. And I was going around to sort of 45, 40, 
35. <laughs> I've just been coming down the main road doing about 25 miles an hour. And <laughs> it feels brilliant. Can't explain it. Can't explain it. Everyone's behind me. No one's in front of me. <laughs> it doesn't keep up with modern traffic. It is the traffic. But you know, brilliant bike. It's always wonderful to see it. It's always wonderful to go out on a ride. And it is a very, very nice machine. So what's next? Next week, I know you wait for me to do something with the crash bars because they are quite big. And next time we're going to be doing something with these. Something more along the lines of making it look like it just got dragged out of the Titanic. The Titanic, which is younger <laughs> than parts of this bike now. Incredible. 123 years old. Poor Queen Victoria's riding around with her head stuck to the back of a motorcycle. But I love it. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to, because this channel is really about messing with Royal Enfields messing with these bikes so maybe see you next time and it's always great to hear your opinions don't hold back see you soon